holidays. Long days relaxing on a beach, or perhaps skiing down a mountain if you're more of a thrill seeker. Have you ever wondered why, upon returning home from your dream trip across the world, you feel tired, grumpy and just a bit out of sorts? You've got jet lag. We feel jet lagged when our daily rhythms of sleeping, waking, eating and moving get out of sync with our new time zone. In 1962, a brave or crazy scientist shut himself away from the world in a dark cave for several months. With the help of his team, he recorded the times that he slept and woke up, and kept track of vital signs like blood pressure. Weirdly enough, even though he had no idea what time it was when he was inside the cave, the scientist felt sleepy at around the same time every day. This meant that even without any outside influences, his body had a way of keeping time. The body clock. This keeps the body's activities operating on a cycle that is about 24 hours in length. This 24 hour pattern is called the circadian rhythm. To understand how your body tells the time, we need to look at the brain. The circadian rhythm is controlled by a cluster of neurons called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, here. Within the suprachiasmatic nucleus, each individual cell is controlled by a kind of molecular clock. This is regulated by over 20 clock genes and the proteins that they code for. This works using a negative feedback loop. This is where an increase in one signal causes a decrease in another. Clock proteins are produced using the clock gene code. These proteins prevent more proteins from being produced by the cell until they have all been degraded. This cycle of protein production and degradation takes around 24 hours. The phrase jet lag arose when a journalist described jet travel as so fast that it leaves your body rhythms behind. This is just what happens when you travel to a different time zone. So, how can the suprachiasmatic nucleus adapt to the new time zone? Using different external signals, the circadian rhythm can be reset so it fits the local time of the environment. The main signal of local time is light. Changes in light intensity can not only give information on time of day, but also time of year. But how are these changes in light communicated to the body's clock? Eyes. On the back of your eyes are a collection of cells known as the retina. These contain different types of light sensitive cells. These cells contain photoreceptor proteins that allow them to respond to light. Studies of clinically blind mice with none of the usual light-sensitive cells in their retinas showed that as long as their eyes had not been removed, the mice experienced no disruption of their sleep patterns. This meant that a different type of cell in the retina must be responsible for signalling changes in light to their body clock, instead of the other light-sensitive cells that normally provide vision. These are photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. These contain a different photoreceptor than the other light-sensitive cells in the retina, called melanopsin. Melanopsin is a protein receptor that sits across the cell membrane and contains a pigment that is sensitive to light energy. Melanopsin is sometimes called a non-visual opsin. This means it can detect changes in light signals, but not quickly enough to provide vision like the opsins found in other retinal cells. So instead, it can detect light and dark, and some patterns. At night, when the environment is darker, the decrease in light is detected by photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. This causes the release of a signal molecule called neurotransmitter, which produces nerve impulses that target the body's clock in the brain. This can signal to the pineal gland, here, to release melatonin. Melatonin targets other, smaller clocks around your body and signals to them to make you feel tired. But are these signals always helpful? And what happens when the body is exposed to high levels of light at unnatural times? This can cause disruption to your body's daily cycle and make you feel jet lagged. So why not adjust your circadian rhythm beforehand? This could be by regulating the times when you expose your body to bright light or by adjusting your bedtime to match the time zone that you are travelling to. Some studies have shown that bright morning light may help you adjust to an earlier time zone, and bright evening light could help you adapt to a later time zone. This could help you arrive home full of energy and ready to tell your friends what a fantastic time you've had.